Okay, so I've done some leveling in Embermount. I decided uh, not to level up as much as I said I would and just got one summoner to uh, level 74 so I can equip those two guardians when I get, went ahead and upgraded them. And now we need to do Dread Dungeon. I don't have any armor for this character at the moment, so need to do some Need to do it on survival first, because, uh, sorry, not survival first, need to do it on campaign first to unlock the survival. Now, first wave Dread Dungeon is actually, on Nightmare anyway, is actually uh, a little bit annoying. Because of how little mana you get out of the chests. Uh, once you get past that, obviously, it's uh, not a problem. So, yeah, I think we're just going to go with an Ensnare and Strength Drain. Let's see, if we put down a Buff Beam... What do we get for Hermit? We could put down some Seed Bomb Towers. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move that Buff Beam. Over here, uh, where do I want to put it, actually? Here, I suppose? Put it like that, and then... Put some... Put some seed bombs. Like that. And then, uh, you know what? We could put some... Put a web wall here. And we can put one here as well. I'm not sure if they come through here, but just in case, we can put a web wall there as well. And then after this first wave, I'll just completely rebuild. Let's get some mana going. Did not account for the spiders. Maybe I... What are the tower stats on this character, actually? What am I doing? Not bad, actually. Okay. I'll put a party popper down, like, right there. Man, those things are so loud. Get rid of all this now. So, what I think I'll do for this is... We'll do... And snare and strength train right about there. The buff beam like this. Do it like like that. Now I'm gonna use a trap for the first time here, because there's a pesky spot over here where mobs like to get stuck, so. Did I say gas trap? I meant darkness trap. Got a darkness trap down there. And, uh... LT spam, basically. Uh, let's get some... Ah! Uh, you know what? I think it 
DST is probably good enough. Like we can do one, two, yeah, two is fine. And if you're able to do Arcane Library on Nightmare, you can definitely do this map on Nightmare. Since there are no Harbingers on this map, so it infinitely becomes easier. Now it would be nice to revisit uh, Moonbase at some point on Nightmare um, because getting, uh, well, it's just a really easy map to complete on Nightmare and it has uh, weapon types for all classes so we can get some actual good weapons. The Fusion Rift from there, for example, will make a nice weapon for our Jester. I believe it has the highest damage per upgrade of any staff, so if we get a good one, there's no reason to really replace it for a long time. And then all the other weapon types could be possible builder weapons. I believe Dread Dungeon is sort of intended to be a, kind of a bridge between normal campaign maps and the Lost Quest maps. Which is why it, it does kind of feel like a campaign map, but then it also has like really good quality. And by that I mean, you know, the items that drop from here are like pretty solid for the point in the game that you can play it. Which is why we're here, and it's why it's been a massive stepping stone in uh, in progression. For the survival, what I'm going to do is just set up a build for it and then um, I'll cut and uh, like pick it back up when I'm done with the survival and have looted a bunch of gear and then we can go through all that gear and uh, make some upgrades.
something you're going to want to do for the survival and pretty much any time you're armor farming is open all the chests because I don't think I've mentioned this before but chests drop really really good items the build that I'm going to be doing for survival will pretty much be this, but just with a golem. Maybe some uh, darkness traps as well. We'll see. Probably one less DST, or just no DSTs at all. Yeah, that's probably... Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do no DSTs, one golem, all LTs with a couple of darkness traps, I think. One down here where I put before, and probably one... How far does that extend? Not very far at all. I'm going to add in more characters, just for braces. Since none of my characters actually have braces. This is a uh, low-level area where you can get braces. Who, who am I adding here? I don't suppose it matters. So the braces that we're going to get, they're nowhere near close to the same level of quality as the accessories you get on Arcane Library. But, I mean, they're better than nothing. They're free stats, essentially, since we don't have... Since we're not using braces at all. Also, we're standing a little bit too far away. There we go. That's interesting. Archer standing uh, just out of range of the auras. Yeah, I'll place the auras a lot further out when I do the survival, I think. I'll place them, like, right here. If you want to know how to hit two um, icons on the wheel, like, exactly at the same time like that, you can press uh, spacebar and click at the same time, and it'll do, you know, the first slot and then the second slot, or the second slot and the third slot, depending on if you already rolled, or if you already clicked the first uh, icon. So we get some mythical braces. And that's it. <laughs> We got some transcendent ones here. So let's see, who do we want to put those on? Probably our apprentice first. She gets the priority. Yeah, definitely. And then we can put some on the auras. Which ones have the most range? These. Uh, let's get some on our Hermit. Those will do. And then... Summon is the only one left, I suppose. Not great, but... Better than nothing. Yeah, looking pretty nice now. The 
some uh, Huntress obviously hasn't changed. All right. Now that we're done with the campaign, we can do the survival. Oh, I believe we have to start on the minimum wave because that's where you would be starting as a uh, on a fresh account. Though, I wonder if you can start on wave 8 on a fresh account. I assume you would, right? We're just going to start on 1. That sounds like... That's, uh, that makes the most sense to me. And now, what do we have on the first wave? We do have two ogres on the first wave, so... Uh, only 153 enemies though, so I think we'll do the same strat as on the campaign where for the first wave we'll just build some seed bomb towers. Let's see, we get even less mana for the survival, right? Or am I... No, it seems... Yeah, it's the same. Okay, what do we want to do here? Probably... The other side of the core, I think, is probably going to work better. And we're going to do Seed Bomb Towers again. With Web Walls. Do one there, do one there, do one here. Uh, we can do another seed bomb tower as well. Just put it, put it further back, I think. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> Hop on the jester, get this buff beam upgraded. Ah, spiders come from the back, huh? Of course they do. As long as we just protect the back here, it's going to be fine. Pretty straightforward. Okay, and then I'm going to put my buff beam right here. Let's get some darkness traps. Put one right there, and... Down here, I suppose. Like that. I'm quite sure how necessary that's going to be, but um, 
Let's get a golem down. Then we have two DU left. I'm just going to be safe and use a couple of re reflect walls for the crystal here. Right, let's do the first wave. And then I will cut and come back uh, on the last wave. Okay, you know what? I think I changed my mind. I am going to use a DST. I think I'm going to use two, actually. Get rid of these reflects. Get rid of two LTs. Let's see, can I fit it? In between here? Now I just have to sell the... Sell the golem. Put that like that. And you know, if I'm going to do DSTs, then there's really not much point doing the darkness traps after all. We'll ditch those. And then we have 60 U left, huh? Let's put some web walls down, why not? Let's get one down like that. Like that. And there. I suppose I should just give a quick explanation of the golem, really. I mean, he's just a massive HP pool that has this aura around him that heals towers and players, and it gives towers and players a resistance buff as well. Let's see if I can check. So currently he's giving me an 80% damage reduction which is on top of, like, these resistances as well, right? So he makes players and towers extremely tanky. It heals them. At the moment, my golem is healing for 7% uh, HP, of the total HP, and it heals every 3 seconds. And then it also has, as you can see, like, that boulder attack. He also has a couple of melee attacks as well. And... As you can see, that projectile attack damage is not insignificant. So he does a ton of damage, keeps your other towers alive, and yeah. Honestly, I'm a big fan of it. I try to use it in as many as many situations as I, as I can. Makes it so you can do really lazy builds, you know, without minions or um, or tower boost sort of uh, stands in for those two things. All right, I'm gonna add in my boost summoner now. Start getting XP. Just 
just while I finish upgrading here. I hope the difficulty ramps up a bit, because currently these werewolves aren't doing anything whatsoever. So hopefully these ogres uh, get a bit... get a bit more HP. Okay, well, I think you get the idea. I'm going to cut the video now and I'll be back on the last wave, probably. Just gonna switch to another summoner. That I could do with some XP. And yeah, I'll see you then. Okay, so we're back now. Oh, I forgot to turn my game volume back on. Um, we are back now at the end of the survival here. Build has not changed. Build has been perfectly fine. And yeah, let's finish up the survival run. I did... Uh, Get just some random armor on my second summoner with the two guardians. And same thing for my other summoner now. So other than both of these only boosting five towers and having uh, not as much boost as they could have, we are good to go for... Uh, I think King's Game is the next survival I want to try. Yeah, I was right about the web wall or the ogres getting more HP. So the web walls that I placed down are actually impactful now. Not really for these ogres though. I mean, a reflect beam here probably would have been a little bit better than that web wall, but that's all right. Let's see, can we get anything special for the last wave? Oh, there's a transcendent. I only, um, oh wow, got another couple of transcendents. I, um, only opened the chests from wave 20 onwards. I'm not sure if that's, like, correct or anything, but just what I decided to do. Because you don't start dropping transcendent gear until about wave, I think it was 21 when I got my first transcendent, so... You could probably open chests a couple waves before that and still drop a trans. But that's just what I decided to do. So four transcendent pieces for the last wave. Pretty nice. There we go. Hey, you get a giraffe for this. That's funny. Okay, so, don't mind the build time, by the way, that is, um, that's because I went and, uh, went AFK and got some lunch midway through. 
So, we have a lot of stuff to look through now. Also, I don't know why I'm locking those. those that's what I want to sell. So we have a whole ton of armor to look through now. And I think I'm going to leave that for the next episode. So we'll do a short um, inventory management episode for next time. And after that, uh, I'm thinking King's Game probably. <laughs>